How's it going everyone? In today's video we're going to learn a little bit more about traits. More specifically we're going to learn how to use WHERE clauses to improve readability of complex trait bounds. When trait bounds become complex, inline syntax can make signatures hard to read. The solution is to move bounds to a WHERE clause after the signature. The benefit is that name, parameters and return types remain uncluttered. And just to show you what I mean, let's create an example. So right above main, I'm going to import, display and debug. Then right below, I'm going to create a function just called func for now. And this function is going to have the following signature. So first it takes type T or defines type T, which will implement display and clone. And then we define type U, which will implement clone and debug. And right after we take them as arguments and we specify the return type. Then inside here, we can just call unimplemented. So as you can see, the inline bounds slowly become very hard to read. Now let's recreate this using the WHERE clause. So right below, we can type in function, function2, and I'm going to paste in the signature, which is going to take T and U, which are both generic types. And it's going to return an I32, just like we did above. And with this being done, we can specify where T implements display plus clone and where U implements clone plus debug. And right below in curly braces, we can add our code. And once again, I'm going to add unimplemented. So as you can see, when generics become quite complex, this makes it a little bit easier to read and edit. Up next, we're going to learn how we can return types that implement traits. And we're going to do this using the implement trait syntax. Now, before I explain anything, let's create a little example that uses this syntax. And for this example, we're going to have to use the summary trait and the social post struct, which we used in a previous lesson. Then right below, we can create a function called returns summarizable. And this will return something that implements the summary trait. Then inside, we need to return a concrete type that implements summary. So in this example, I'm going to pass in a social post. So the concrete type here is the social post, but the callers are only going to see implement summary. And what's nice about this is that the caller is going to depend on this implementation, not the exact type of the struct. So here we have a social post, but this could also be an article. If we had an article that implemented the summary trait. It's important to note though, that there is a limitation. For example, we cannot return two different types in different branches, even if they both implement the summary trait. But let's take a look at a better example where this doesn't throw a bunch of errors. So I'm going to remove these two pieces and keep the public trait part. Then we're going to go back to the days of Twitter where we had tweets and life was beautiful and we will implement the summary trait for that tweet. Then right below, we can create a function which is called returns summarizable. And all that matters is that we are implementing the summary trait. And since the tweet implements that summary trait, everything's going to work just fine here. Then inside the main function, we can create an item, which will just return the tweet from this returns summarizable function. And then we can print that item or the summary of that item. And when we run this, what we should get as an output is this following text. And once again, what's cool about this is that we can return anything that implements the summary trait. So even if we were to change this tweet to something such as an article, that would work just fine. But obviously we need to create an article which implements the summary trait first. 